we have seen about characteristic length in fluid mechanics the characteristic length in heat transfer is also present we can see characteristic length in uh, different uh, parts of the heat transfer subject so we can see in this characteristic length term in convection and also in lumped heat transfer so in convection uh, both the processes are present one is forced convection and the other is free convection so first let us see about uh, what is this characteristic length in convection in forced convection and in free convection uh, the both processes uh, occur in a different way in forced convection velocity is present velocity of fluid is present so here velocity is not present in free convection velocity is not present in forced convection velocity is present there is a bulk motion and uh, that moves with a large velocity and in free convection moves with a small velocity small velocity uh, the fluid will be moving in free convection so now this forced con uh, uh, forced convection uh, characteristic length is similar to fluid mechanics so in forced convection uh, different numbers will be present nusl number is equal to hlc by k and uh, reynolds number is equal to rho v lc by mu and uh, in free convection there is grashof number grashof number which is equal to rho square uh, g beta delta t into lc cube divided by mu square so this is the grashof number so here also lc is present so how to find a characteristic length in case of forced convection and in case of free convection let us see now in case of forced convection it is same like a uh, finding in fluid mechanics only so the flow may be the in free convection uh, forced convection it may be over external flows external flow and internal flow so if you want a deep understanding of characteristic length of this forced convection please watch uh, that fluid mechanics video so for external flows characteristic length is equal to dimension dimension along boundary layer development dimension along boundary layer development for example there is this plate so there is this thickness t and this is l so along which dimension uh, the boundary layer is developing that is along this lengthy l so lc is equal to l in case of flat plate and uh, next example is suppose there is there is a cylinder and uh, the uh, the flow the fluid flow is in this way so the fluid flow is this way so in this case what is this characteristic length if you observe here if i draw this side view the flow will be like this so what is boundary layer boundary layer means where uh, there are um, viscous forces are present and uh, there is 
rotation of uh, molecules so the fluid which is coming from here it will be under this motion so there is a swirling of these particles so this is the boundary layer region this is the boundary layer region so by changing what dimension by changing what dimension that uh, boundary layer region is affected so lc is equal to d by changing dimension of a uh, uh, diameter of this uh, cylinder we can uh, change the boundary layer so here lc is equal to d diameter then what if uh, the cylinder this is the cylinder and this is length l this is diameter d if the flow is in this direction so if the flow is in this direction the boundary layer development will be like this so by changing what dimension the boundary layer uh, uh, region will be affected by changing the length so if uh, i put up to here only length then there is only laminar flow then there is uh, no turbulent flow so by changing which dimension by changing the l by changing the length uh, we can change the uh, laminar re uh, sorry uh, boundary layer region so based on this characteristic length uh, is given for external flows then for internal flows for internal flows lc is equal to 4 into cross sectional area by weighted perimeter so this is the same case of uh, fluid mechanics please watch that video now in case of free convection this is the important topic uh, that we are going to see now in case of free convection this free convection is uh, based on the principle of low density moves higher so low density particles moves to a high alt altitude so for example let us consider this there is a so there is this plate now there is ambient air ambient air present if the temperature of this is greater than ambient temperature you can see the particles here the particles near to the that uh, that are touching to this surface will get heated after getting heated this moves up so the another particle also will be present so this particle will be moving up and going here so these two particles uh, should move upside but here there are already there are particles previously present and these uh, two particles should move here and next it goes on like that so the velocity and the temperature the velocity and the temperature of these particles these particles will be increasing and the boundary layer will be forming like this so this is the length so along uh, which uh, dimension the boundary layer is forming along the length so lc is equal to l in case of uh, this plate vertical plate now in case of a inclined plate how it will be
so this is inclined plate and l is equal to lc so in this case how is the boundary layer developed so here the particles gets heated here also ts is greater than t infinity so the particle gets heated and it moves up already the particle is present here so it moves up to here and in this case so the boundary layer development is in this way so along uh, which dimension uh, the boundary layer is developing so lc is equal to l by varying uh, uh, if i keep uh, length small if i keep the length small then there is a uh, elimination of a turbulent region so boundary layer region is affected in this case also if i keep the length small up to here only then uh, la this uh, laminar uh, region can be maintained and the turbulent region can be eliminated so now next if there is cylinder or a sphere if there is cylinder and drawing this from side view so if there is the cylinder and this ts is greater than t infinity so the particles on this top will be moving upwards due to high temperature the particles downward will be moving should move uh, top side so that will be moving in this way so this is the way the boundary layer is present so by changing uh, 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 sorry along which dimension uh, the boundary layer is developed along this diameter d so by changing the dimension d that is affected the boundary layer region is affected if i keep small diameter so then boundary layer is also small so by changing that dimension so lc is equal to d in case of the cylinder in case of sphere also in case of sphere also same lc is equal to d there comes a problem when the surface is horizontal so when this ts is greater than t infinity so the uh, the flow will be this way so in this way the flow will be present they have found out a heat transfer experimentally so from that uh, they have given a empirical relation so lc is equal to surface area by perimeter so which surface area we need to take so this is the 3d diagram so the surface area over which uh, the heat is uh, transferring so this is the surface area from where uh, the boundary layer is developed and the perimeter so the considered surface area that perimeter perimeter of the considered surface area so this is the perimeter so for that lc is equal to surface area by perimeter so this is how we need to find in free convection then next comes to lumped heat transfer so we can see that in byer number h lc by k so in lumped heat transfer in lumped heat transfer lc is equal to volume by surface area so this is the formula this also from experiments uh, the empirical value is given for lumped heat transfer so volume by surface area what does it mean so volume is a volume of body volume of 
entire body and surface area surface area is area perpendicular to heat flow area perpendicular to heat flow direction so for example uh, let me take this wall or vertical plate so here this is let me say this is t and this is l this is mm, let me say d so lc is equal to what so in order to find lc first we need to find what uh, is the direction of heat flow so this is the direction of heat flow then what is lc lc is equal to volume volume is l dt by surface area what areas are perpendicular to heat flow direction this area and the area present on this side or on the other side so one area is l into d so there are two areas present so into 2 so ld ld gets cancelled thickness by 2 so this thickness divided by 2 is the characteristic length in case of this now if you consider a cylinder if you consider this cylinder what is lc here also first you need to ask from uh, uh, in which direction the heat is flowing if the heat is flowing in this direction along the length then lc is equal to volume uh, if this is diameter d and this is length l so volume is pi by 4 d square into l divided by surface area which surface areas are perpendicular to the heat flow direction this surface area and this surface area that is present uh, that is pi by 4 d square how many surface areas are there two surface areas so this is this gets cancelled and lc is equal to l by 2 in case of cylinder where the heat flow is along the length i'll take the same cylinder but now the heat flow is in this direction radial direction now lc is equal to pi by 4 d square into l this remains the same volume remains the same the surface area changes here which is the surface area the surface area so this total entire surface area that is pi d into l so pi pi d d L, L. finally d by 4 this is the remaining lc is equal to d by 4 or uh, in terms of radius it is r by 2 so this is for cylinder uh, in which the heat is flowing from center to the surface in case of sphere also in case of sphere lc is equal to volume what is the volume 4 by 3 pi r cube divided by surface area of sphere 4 pi r square r square so r by 3 so lc is equal to r by 3 in case of sphere so these are the um, characteristic lengths that we find in heat transfer in forced convection free convection and in lumped heat transfer